Oh, oh my God, that was right. The, I mean, I didn't think there was ever a way to make bacon bad. Oh, he found it But right. he found it. Curtis, my first impression of him was like, very smiley guy, and he starts talking about his Aunt Tasha and her casserole, and I'm thinking, do you like Aunt Tasha? Because, you know, that casserole, mushed, like overcooked and smushed in the bottom. And Curtis's fruit salad. I mean, was it fruit? Was it a salad? I don't know. It was Was neon. it a paint swatch? <laughs> right? It was the new Pantone color for 2021. I, I guarantee mean, you that. Elisa, I remember from the movie Clueless. Mm -hmm. um, you know, her steak and potatoes dinner. I mean, what really made me laugh, it was the holding the beef and trying to wrap, like, I like this. It's like the maple. I'm like, that's just not gonna do anything, but I like watching you do that. But her beef was not terribly cooked. I know, I was very pleasantly surprised with that. Maybe it's the, the tying off method of very loose. Accessorizing her <laughs> tenderloin with It time. was a cute tenderloin, I gotta admit. <laughs> I remember Lori Beth from all that. My sisters used to watch that. You know, her fried chicken was actually fairly tasty. I mean, the piece that I got, fortunately, happened to be cooked through, so I, I thought it was really well seasoned, and I was like, oh. Because always in the baseline challenge, that's what I'm looking for. Like, really what I'm looking for mostly is seasoning, and I was impressed by the seasoning. Yeah, her chicken was definitely had a great, you know, coating and, crunch and seasoning to it, but the middle of my piece was a nice, a nice medium rare poultry. That's a party foul. <laughs> right. Jenny, I mean, she made the, the like Korean style short mm -hmm. rib, and then she was doing <laughs> twice baked potatoes and roasted cauliflower, and I mean, when she took that whole head of cauliflower. It keeps slipping around. Ah! It's like she's roasting a soccer ball. My, my favorite technique she implemented was when she wrapped each individual potato in plastic wrap and then microwaved it. But I love that she spent all that time doing that and then she didn't cook the potatoes. The potatoes were so raw. The plastic did not help, evidently. And Nicole, she was attempting to make tortillas, like chicken enchiladas, and I saw them and I was like, oh, pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> so fat. She <laughs> spent more time with those drinks too, totally, and then what she did on her dish. And remember oh. she took a bite of that pepper and just oh. to test the spice and put the rest of the pepper that she just took a bite on into the blender. I think she wanted to hurt us that that, that first <laughs> bite we took. I think she did. I remember Jody from Full House. Jody made shrimp tacos with, and she called them Hawaiian shrimp tacos. Yes. And I was like, all right, you know, shrimp tacos with rice and beans. And I was like, all right, tacos, rice and beans does not scream Hawaiian mm -hmm. to me. I remember her dish was just like, just white. It was yeah. like stark white and then a clump of canned beans just right on the side there, like a tablespoon. She said, my boyfriend makes these. And I was like, okay, oh, are you gonna keep them? <laughs> it's time to move on. Mark Lawn, I love his energy. I remember him from Real World Road Rules Challenge. Like 20 years ago, and he's still competing on these shows. This guy's like frozen in time in a block of muscular ice or something. <laughs> they preserved him. Then, yeah, Mark tells me he's making a pepperoni gnocchi bake situation. And I'm like, gnocchi from scratch in an hour. I'm like, you know, it doesn't matter who you are. You can't make potato gnocchi in an hour. It's it's not about your skill as a cook, it's just about how long the potatoes take to cook and cool and all of that kind of stuff. Um, but he really did save himself a step by not cooking the gnocchi mm -hmm. first, so. There you, you know, go. Like. He's obviously strategizing, surrounded by whole strips of bacon. Oh, oh my God, that was right. The, I mean, I didn't think there was ever a way to make bacon bad. Oh, he found it, But right. he found it. Matt um, Lawrence from Boy Meets World, right? One of the great Lawrence brothers. You know, he was very methodical with his, you know, peeling his eggplant very carefully and he had them all laid out to salt them. And, um, you know, eggplant parm was his thing. It actually turned out pretty well. Mm -hmm. My, what I thought was so funny about it though was that it was only this thick. Well, the, the ratios were way off because it had the same amount of cheese and sauce on it, but like a tenth of the eggplant we usually get. So it was like <laughs> very little eggplant, double cheese, which, right? but the, you could see that, you know, he, he did spend 
time thinking about the dish. Not right. Just throwing like, things in a pan. My mom told me to do it this way, and I'm like, oh, how cute. Mm. Tracy, Tracy Gold. So the pasta bake, Tracy said that she makes this for her sons all the time, and they're actually tired of it. My guess is that that's her, like, one dish. Uh, pasta bake, I mean, it's it was just like a kitchen sink of stuff thrown in there. And baked again, hoping mad magical things happen in that oven. Right? I kind of don't get the idea of a, a bake like that because she was working so hard to do it on the stove and then you put it in a casserole dish. Does it give it to me? It's ready. It's obviously ready. The right. oven's only going to overcook it. Right. Make the cheese hard. Right. And then that fritter was like, you could you could play Chip. racquetball with that. <laughs>